Good day, dear viewers. My name is Luke Tessier, and this is A Form of Sound Words. We continue this week with our series on biblical misconceptions, that is, ideas and concepts that the general public believes is biblical, but in fact is completely or largely unbiblical. And this week, we'll continue with the theme of what God looks like, specifically what Jesus looks like. Last week, our main focus was on the physical appearance of God, the Father, though the same conclusion could be applied to the Holy Spirit. And the conclusion was that God is a spirit, and spirits have no physical likeness. Furthermore, we saw how the Bible clearly prohibits the creation of physical representations of God. The Bible calls such representations idols. Those who create or venerate such representations are called idolaters, and the Word of God clearly states the end of all idolaters. Revelation 21 and verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, let us consider the one person of the Godhead, God the Son, that certainly does have a physical body. I speak, of course, of the Lord Jesus Christ. What does Jesus look like? Does he look like this? Or like this? Or like this? Well, again, what does the Bible say? Precious little, actually. There's a bit, but not much. Here's what we know about what the Lord looked like from the pages of Scripture. In the Old Testament, the prophet Isaiah prophesied the following concerning the Lord's appearance in Isaiah 53, verses 1 to 3. There we read, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him, as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. And in chapter 50 of the book of Isaiah, in another prophecy concerning the Lord Jesus Christ, we learn that Jesus sported a beard. Isaiah 50, verse 6. I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. And that, dear viewers, is essentially it. Beyond that, nothing is given to us concerning the Lord Jesus Christ's physical appearance. There are a few prophetic passages, like Revelation chapter 1, verse 12 to 16. There we read, 
and I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Now, clearly, such passages are describing the Lord Jesus Christ's attributes within the context of a vision. There's no way that the man described in passages like Revelation 1 looked like the man who walked around Galilee and Judea 2,000 years ago. So, according to the Bible, what did Jesus look like? Well, he was a plain, regular-looking guy, nothing particularly attractive about him, and he had a beard. Oh, and one more thing we can infer from 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 14. The Apostle Paul there states, Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? So Jesus most certainly didn't look like this. He didn't have long hair. As for the other physical representations of Jesus, they are all conjecture, pure invention from various artists throughout the church age. Now, why? Why doesn't the scripture contain more information on the Lord's physical appearance? The Bible does describe other men, like King David, he was a redhead, King Saul, who was one of the tallest men in Israel, and Elisha, like me, was bald. Why not give us a little extra for the most important character in the Bible? I submit that the absence of such descriptions of the Lord isn't an oversight or a lack in the Word of God. I think the Lord knows the hearts of sinful men quite well. And He knew that any physical description of the Lord Jesus Christ would become a blueprint to the mass production of idols. And as seen in our last study, the Lord despises idols. Consider Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 15 to 19. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves. For ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb, out of the midst of the fire, lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any beast that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air, the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth, and lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun 
and the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. When God gave the Ten Commandments to Israel in the wilderness of Horeb, right after the exodus out of Egypt, the Lord made sure that the Israelites saw nothing of his person, nothing they could transform into an idol. Because if they had seen something, anything, you can be sure they would have made the idols. So given are we to idolatry. Consider Moses' burial after he had passed away in Deuteronomy chapter 34, verses 6 and 7. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab, over against Beth Peor. But no man knoweth of his sepulcher unto this day. Now why? Why is it that the location of Moses' sepulcher, why was it kept secret? Because the Lord knew. He knew the hearts of men. He knew that if men knew the location of that sepulcher in no time flat, that location would become an idol. Dear viewers, I suggest the Lord remained consistent when it came to the lack of physical descriptors of the Lord Jesus Christ. I also suggest that all these representations of Jesus in paintings, in statues, in movies and in television shows. All these is a violation of the second commandment of Moses and the overall teachings of the Bible. I remind you all, dear viewers, of John chapter 4, verse 23 to 24. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. No objects, no images, no things, things of any kind. God wants true worshipers, those who worship in spirit and in truth. And with that, dear viewers, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.